So, um, give me the, give me the uh, the Coles notes version of what I need to know about the Patriots in camp, and then we'll get to the question about Isaiah Wynn and and, and I guess kind of the serious issue, the serious issue with that team. Well, I I think right now that we've seen this is a team that that is kind of. It's been an interesting summer, I'll put it that way, with a, kind of a, a tamped-down camp, for lack of a better term. It hasn't been all that intense, and we haven't seen them, you know, do an awful lot of stuff that we've seen them do over the last three, four years. You know, we, we haven't seen any joint practices. Uh, the, the games have been uh, – they've looked impressive, but I, I think that there is a worry right now. I don't want to say a worry, but it, it, it's interesting that there's still some questions about this team heading into the regular season – at a couple of key positions. I'm not saying that they're not, you know, one of the, you know, on the, on that short list in terms of, you know, teams that have a legit shot to make the Super Bowl, but there's still some questions, you know, when it comes to wide receiver, depth at wide receiver specifically, um, you know, maybe some depth at linebacker. Uh, there's some moving parts there that I think are going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out over the course of the regular season. Uh, what is the biggest question to your mind right now? Really, the depth of wide receiver. I think that, you know, they've lost, they lost Danny Amendola. They lost Brandon Cooks. They lost Malcolm Mitchell all this offseason. Um, and they really didn't add anyone of any real, you know, uh, import. Uh, you know, anyone who might be capable of you know, bringing a little juice to that team uh, at, at the wide receiver spot. It, it is. Like I said before, it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out, especially over the course of the first four games. Look, you can really you can paper over a lot of deficiencies at the wide receiver position. Um, I think we may have dropped Christopher's line. We will try to get him back. Travis is working diligently. I thought the line was still, that's weird. I thought the line was still there. So we mentioned the Patriots uh, opened the season against the Houston uh, Texans, and and um, you know the big the big injury if one called that um, their first round rookie Isaiah Wynn uh, tore his ACL, and um, that's uh, I'm sorry, not ACL, his Achilles, and anybody who's as I mentioned any type of Achilles injury understands what that is like. So that that's kind of the pressing question right now is with Isaiah Wynn out, um, you know, who steps up for the for for the Patriots? And uh, there we go, we got Christopher Price back. Sorry about that, Christopher. We dropped the line. Please continue. Um, no, it, it is like I said, at the wide receiver position. That really, for me, is the biggest question mark. Um, how they're going to make it all work without Julian Edelman, especially over the first four weeks. Um, but really, they don't have a lot of depth there. When when you look at the fact, like I said before, they lost Brandon Cooks, they mm-hmm. lost Danny Amendola, Malcolm Mitchell retired. They're not Malcolm uh, Mitchell did retire, but he had the knee issues, which kind of you know left him on the outs. They didn't really add anyone who could bring a level of oomph to that offense. They do have some guys there, like I said before, Gronkowski, James White, who can help paper over a lot of the deficiencies. But it, it's going to be interesting to see the way it all shakes out in the passing game moving forward. Now, uh, not having Isaiah win, is there enough depth to make to, to, to cover that at least initially? I mean, we know it's going to, yeah. we know you're going to lose offensive linemen as the season goes on. Probably that's, that seems like every team does, but, uh, is that, is that a setback for this team or is there enough depth at that unit that, that they can, I, they can I, figure it out? It's going to be, it really left them with no margin for error. I'll say that the five guys they have there now are really good. But like you said, as you you know, as we've seen over the course of you know most NFL seasons, you're going to lose an offensive lineman here or there. Um, they were able to get a guy in Trent Brown in a deal they made for the 49ers to step in at left tackle in place of Nate Solder, and he's done a tremendous job over the course of the summer. He's really made that position his own. You have a really good interior, two good guards, a good center, and a right tackle in Marcus Cannon, who was on and off last year because of health issues. So. Um, the loss of win is tough, but I think really right now, like I said before, it, it, it kind of robs them of any margin for error when it comes to injury along the offensive line. Christopher, you talked about how different the camp's been in terms of, in, in terms of how it's structured and, and has, has that, has Tom Brady had to adjust his preparation as a result of that? Or, you know, is it, is, is kind of Tom Brady and, 
you know, he's in Tom Brady land and whatever every, ever else is going on, he's going to do the same thing he needs to do to get ready for the season. I think it's a little bit more, and I like that phrase. I might end up using that. He's a, it's a little bit more of the case of him being in Tom Brady land, especially at the age of 41. Um, the preparation, to my mind, is the same, at least, you know, when camp began. He did not get as many reps when it came to throwing the football over the course of the two-plus weeks, at least from, you know, from what we saw. But really, you know, we saw this in the second game when he just kind of stepped right in. It was his first game since the Super Bowl and looked absolutely razor sharp. You know, you can make allowances when it comes to a guy like Brady that you necessarily can't make with, you know, some other guys in the National Football League. So, um, I guess to answer your question, it's pretty much steady as she goes with him and the quarterback. I do think it's going to be, you know, the one thing that him not being there for the voluntary workouts, and I'm putting them a quote fingers here, building up a chemistry with the newcomers. I think he's left himself open to a little bit of second guessing, especially if he starts off slowly, but I, I don't think that there's any reason he's going to start off slowly. So, you know, he's, he's one of the guys who continues to be at the absolute peak of his powers. And there's no reason to think he's going to slide backward going into 2018. You know what I, you know what I, I find fascinating. I mean, there's a lot of things I find fascinating about the Patriots. I'm kind of, I'm, I guess I'm in the minority cause I'm a neutral and I'm a Vikings fan. I'm neutral when it comes to the Patriots, but I, I admire them. I, I, I kind of have a soft spot for them in a, in a variety of ways. But, you know, everybody in the league is up in arms about the new helmet rule and about the tackling. And everybody's up in arms about it. You know, Mike Zimmer says people are going to lose jobs because of it. Bill Belichick says, eh, not really. <laughs> he, he, everybody, it's like, I don't know if he's, you know, it's just it's it's his his default position is to be a contrarian or what. But it's one of the things I do like about Bill Belichick. Yeah, you know, everybody else is running around losing their head. And he's going, I'll make it work. <laughs> what is it about him that, that is that just the weight of all those Super Bowl rings that allows him to do that? Well, I think there is also, Jeff, in my experience, having covered the team since 2001, there is a disarming practicality to the man when he is presented with some sort of obstacle or new rule or whatever the case may be, that he looks at it and instead of, kind of fretting and worrying about it and, you know, making these grand public pronouncements like a lot of people do. He just says, okay, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to, to, to work with this plan? How are we going to work with this rule? How are we going to work with this personnel? And he doesn't really get ruffled by, by a whole lot. You know, to your point, I think we saw the same thing with the, with the new kickoff rules this mm-hmm. year with him. And, and I think it's interesting that one of the things he was able to go out and do this offseason is, is get a guy in Cordero Patterson who's one of the best guys in the league at returning kickoffs, who, who has you know, a, a tremendous amount of experience there after losing a guy like Deion Lewis, of course. But, you know, you go out and you get a guy like Patterson to be able to, you know, start thinking about, okay, how can we – find a way to beat these new rules and maybe catch someone unaware. So I guess ultimately, really, when it comes down to Belichick, he's not ruffled by a lot. I think a lot of it, like you said, is, is because the fact that he's, you know, he has all those Super Bowl rings. And so that gives you a little bit of job security. And you can say what you want to say a lot of the times. But I also think, like I said, there is a practicality there mm. that a lot of people with the National Football League just don't have. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I also what I like about it, too, is the fact that it kind of sends a bit of a sends a bit of a message to your players because I really do think that, I mean, I covered, now it's different in the NFL, obviously, but I, I back when I started out as a reporter, I, I covered the CFL. And the thing I remember about CFL training camps is how it would get so boring and so repetitive that really dumb stuff would become an issue, right? And, and because guys get yeah. bored and it just, and, and, and dumb stuff becomes an issue. And I, I yeah. think in a lot of ways, this is just Bill Belichick. You know, hey, let me talk about it. You guys just go about and prepare. Let me talk about it. It's no big deal. We'll adjust. I mean, I love this quote about, you know, we looked at, what, it, what, what did he say? He said, our team looked at probably 25 plays last night, and I think of all of us, I think all of us could see those plays. It, it's a real sort of just deal with it attitude that I think is absolutely yeah. important in training camp. Yeah, and, and Jeff, the other thing, too, is you almost compare it to being a parent with a child. And if you're a child and you see your parent fly off or you see your father or mother or whatever fly off the handle, you're going to take your cue from that. And I think that the, that the players take their cue from Belichick in that regard where, look, the coach isn't freaking out about it. I'm not going to freak out about it. And, and, and I think that that kind of filters down throughout the organization. When, when you see Belichick and his reaction to things like this, 
I think it brings a level of calm if you are a player in a Patriots uniform. Say, mm. all right, look, the coach isn't worried. I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be worried. Chris, we're going to let you run. Appreciate you doing this, man. Sounds good. Take care. We'll talk soon. Absolutely. Christopher Price covers the Patriots for the Boston Sports Journal.